Hey, good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome to Choose Life. I am Pastor Gina Coleman. Welcome to a brand new week. I hope you already started to decree and declare that you are going to have a good week and you are God's obedient son and daughter. So I'm going to go right ahead and get into prayer. Father, we love you and honor you this morning. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for a fresh start, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks that you forgave us of our sins of last week, Lord God, and you have cleansed us from all, cleansed us from all unrighteousness, Lord. So we praise you and honor you, Lord God in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, for blessing us. We thank you for keeping your hand upon us, God. We thank you for making provision for us, Father, in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for a start of a new week, Lord God. And I decree and declare that we shall have a great week in the mighty name of Jesus, no matter what comes up against us, for you are with us always, even unto the end of the world. So God, I thank you this morning for every viewer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right, today is Monday, August the 16th. All right, and the message is, we look at your heart. We look at your heart. I see your heart for the Father, and that's what he's looking at. I see your heart for Jesus, and it moves him. I see your heart for me, and it delights me. Man looks on the outer appearance, the flaws, the weaknesses, even the strengths, but we look at your heart. Your love may seem imperfect and weak toward us in your own eyes, but it moves our heart. It thrills us. We love you more than you know. As you grow in revelation and our love for you, your love for us will increase. We're looking at your heart. We're watching your heart grow in love. We're watching you grow in Christ. We love you. We look at your heart. Praise God that the Lord God Almighty looks at our hearts because sometimes, a lot of times, our uh, behavior on the outward doesn't necessarily line up with um, our hearts. There are many people, and I'm sure maybe you are one, I know I am one and was one, struggle uh, getting some things right in a particular area outwardly, but inwardly inwardly we want to please the lord we want to do what's right and our heart is right and and we meditate on scriptures and we pray that we will get that area right so i give god praise i mean i know this because it, you know of the word the lord tells us that he does not look at um us as man looks man looks on the um outer appearance but god looks at the heart and that comes from the story of david and and Saul, and when David was being selected as the next king, you know, Samuel looked on the sons of Jesse, um, which is David's brothers. He looked on the sons of Jesse's. He looked on the outer appearance. He could not see their heart. But God had uh, chosen David because David had a heart right towards God. David was a man um, that would do what the Lord wants him to do. That's why the Lord said in this word, I have found a man after my own heart. So I give the Lord praise that we um we are not being judged by God by our our appearance and as the book says that people look on our outer appearance some people misread us so so badly and sometimes we misread people so badly we think that because somebody is in a particular behavior at the moment that's how their heart is but that's not necessarily true um it can be true but it's not necessarily true and that's why god is the one that divides the who from the do god divides um the outer appearance from what the heart is doing and so i, I give god praise again that he looks at our heart and not what our mouth mouths say not what um people say about us or even what we say about ourselves he looks at our heart he looks at the position of our hearts he looks and sees that people are longing to change they really want to change but may have a struggle so i give god praise again that he looks at our heart because for years i struggle with um a temper i struggled with a temper and um no one knew that i was home crying out to, to the lord like you know god fix me fix me fix me i don't want to be this way and um, that's what God looks at and that's what he answers the prayers that we pray in our hearts not even the words that we say out of our mouths what we pray in our hearts because he watches the heart and see if the heart is in alignment with uh, his um, laws and his precepts and the desires that he have um, placed in the word for us to follow after 
All right, it says, we love you more than you know. Yes, and that's so true because sometimes I sit and I think about like how God could easily judge each one of us, but he doesn't. Like in a flash, he could just judge us. In a flash, he could uh, do away with us because of uh, the behaviors that we constantly uh, do the same thing over and over again that, that d doesn't uh, please him, but yet he demonstrates his love. And yeah, I get just give God praise for that <laughs> again. And, you know, if you know you, you know that you fall short, you ought to give God praise that he doesn't come in with the swift hand and judge us and deal with us. Um, yeah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> it said in, in the message, um, as we grow in, in the revelation of how much God loves us, that's more will grow in loving them. Yeah, when you know somebody really, really loves you, you want to to the best of your ability to repay or give back that same love. Now, of course, we'll never be able to give God the same love that he has given unto us, but we can definitely try to align our life with the life of obedience that our love would uh, be demonstrated through um, the life of obedience. And so I pray that we would all know God's love to a deeper level, um, not for the body as a whole, but for ourselves. You know, we all need to know the love of God for ourselves personally. Personally, we need to understand it because God's love, I believe, looks differently for each person. I really do believe that. I, I know that some people need certain things, right, from the Lord, while other people, they don't need those things. They need something different from the Lord. So I pray that you and I would know God's love um, as individuals and that we would grow deeper in God's love as individuals. All right. I don't think there's anything else that I can uh, extract from the message, just except that the Lord said that he looks um, at our heart and not our outer appearance. So don't be too hard on yourself sometimes. I know that we're hard on ourselves sometimes when we fall short, we mess up, but don't be too hard because God looks at the intent. He, he knows that you and I want to get it right. And he also knows the people that don't want to get it right. He also knows the people that, uh, or he knows the people that struggle. Like I really want to get this right. God, I keep going around and around in the circle, but you know what? Even in the reality of wanting to get things right, we still need God's grace. We cannot do it on our own. There will be nothing that we can ever say. Um, no, I did this. I stopped this. Thing. no, no, we stop it even even by the grace of God. That's how we stop it. We stop it by the grace and the mercy of God. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get to the first scripture. The first scripture is Psalms 26.2. And Psalms 22 says this, 26.2 says this, Test me, Lord, try me and examine my heart and mind. I'm going to read it again. Test me, Lord, and try me examine my heart and mind. So sometimes we need to ask the Lord, show us our hearts. I know for years I didn't want to, and even sometimes now I don't want the Lord to ask the Lord, show me my heart because I, I know that there's some <laughs> ugliness in there. And the reality is there's ugliness in all of our hearts. But if we ask the Lord to show us our heart, he can show it to us no matter how you know, whatever is in there, he will clean us up from it if we cry out to him once he show it to us. So I have been asking the Lord just recently, show me my heart, God, show me the ugliness so that I can, I can do away with the ugliness that I could be free from the ugliness that's in there, right? That's why we definitely need a savior and we need a uh, communion and with the fel uh, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, because there is a lot of evil inside of us. There is a lot of bad thoughts inside of us. And so we need to stay close to the Holy Spirit and we do need to um, ask him to show us our heart, examine our heart, examine it and see if there's any wicked way in there. And probably, yes, there's some wicked way in there because even though David um, had a heart to do right by God, he had some things in his heart that wasn't right, but the Lord knew how to separate the sin from the heart of the man, right? So, yeah, we need to ask the Lord to examine us. Is is he's going to do it when we keep asking him and when we be honest with him, he's going to do it. He's going to show us our heart. The next scripture is Hebrews 10:22. All right. Hebrews 10:22 says this. And let us consider how we may spur one another. Oh no, nope, that's 24. <laughs> it says, "Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart." 
and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, having our bodies washed with pure waters. So let me read it again. It says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart. So God wants us to be sincere in our heart. He wants us to be sincere when we mess up and, and we, uh, you know, go to him and repent. He, we don't want to go to God just to escape, uh, you know, a possible discipline. We want to go to God uh, sincerely sorrowful with a godly sorrowful of those things that we've done or did not do. We ought to be uh, sorrowful for the times when the Lord uh, commissions us to do something and we don't do it or the Lord says, hold your, hold your peace or whatever it is. We need to draw to, near to God with a sincere heart, sincere in wanting to know him, sincere in wanting to follow um, the, his precepts and laws, sincere in wanting to be the son or the daughter that he wants us to be, which is obedient, sincere in everything that we do, sincere in loving him, sincere in loving one another, sincere in putting into practice the word of God. So God wants us to have a sincere heart because our hearts have been closed cleansed. They have been cleansed, but we have to catch up and get in alignment, hallelujah, with what the Lord has already done in the spirit realm so that it can manifest in the natural. And the next and last scripture is 1 John 4, 16, verse 15. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. So God wants us to know that one, that he really, really loves us and he looks on our heart and that we have been made perfect in God, right? We have been made perfect in God and that God wants us to rely on his love. He wants us to rely on his love that he has for us. Um, that he's not just looking to bring a hammer down upon us because um, uh, our outward behavior has not yet lined up with our hearts. The thing is, that's why we have the word to help the flesh line up with the word of God, to help the flesh to line up with the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. So we are in God. God loves us. God demonstrated his love unto us um, by sending Jesus to die for us while we were yet sinners. So remember, don't be too hard on yourself. Yes, of course, repent and work to change you and I both. But remember, God looks at your heart. A lot of times we get into condemnation because we mess up outwardly, but that's not the biggest thing for God. God is looking at the heart. He looks at the people that cry out, Father, help me. <laughs> You know, he looks for those that don't want to keep stumbling, even though they keep stumbling in the same spot. You know, we all do that. So um, I just want to encourage you that God looks at your heart and that he loves you. And he wants us to get to know um, the love that he has for us as individuals deeper. So I'm going to go ahead and read the prayer. All right. It says, um, I feel as if I fail you many times. Tell me, do you ever feel that way? Like, it's like, oh no, I, I just messed up again. Because sometimes it's not even a behavior on the outside. I believe that for most Christians that have been in, in the Lord for a long time, it's not a behavior on the outside. It's usually a thought. And I just want to insert this here. I watched this video um, the other day that was uh, that I had a privilege to watch. And, you know, some people were not, Actually, it was talking about the compartments in hell, right? And how hell is compartmentalized. But one of the things that people um, went to hell for were their thoughts, were their thoughts. And um, not, it's just that their thoughts was just unrestrained. They thought anything, right? Because we can send it in our thoughts. You don't have to open your mouth to sin. You could, you could, people can uh, fornicate in their minds. They can, they can lust in their minds. There's so much the mind can do. Um, you know, yeah. So I, I just want to encourage you 
and myself like to get rid of thoughts as soon as possible. We could think negatively. We could hate people in our minds and never ever treat them badly. I mean, pe there are some people out here that can really, really do that. We are definitely can rebel in our minds. I remember, and I know I mentioned this some time ago, that one of my friends said years ago that it didn't matter what people were saying. She didn't say anything back to them, whatever they told her to do. She had already made up her mind. She wasn't going to do it. So that was rebellion in her mind. Before she even like uh, really heard the whole thing out, she had just decided, I'm not doing this. Whatever you say, I'm not doing this. So that's a rebellion in her thoughts. So I just want to encourage you to... Um, and myself to, to get rid of uh, nasty negative thoughts about uh, people, about yourself, about God, about anything and everything. Let's get rid of those thoughts so that uh, we won't be judged in our minds because the Lord already told us what kind of mind that he wants us to have. He wants us to think a certain way um, and he also wants to, us to put on the mind of Christ and he also gave us the weapons to cast down imaginations. So I just wanted to insert that part that um, know that God is watching the thoughts. He's watching our thoughts. All right. So I'm going to start again. It says, I feel I fail you many times, but I do love you. Teach me how to love you more. Give me an anointing love. Give me an anointing to love you more. Increase my capacity to love you more. You deserve all my love and even more than I have to give. You deserve my love even more than I have to give. And Father, we thank you so much, Lord God, for looking at our heart, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you don't judge us as men judge us, um, even as we sometimes judge people, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you look at our heart and not of our outer appearance, Lord God. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that our hearts, God, will line up. God, with your will and your purpose and your word for us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we ask that you would clean our hearts up from all ugliness and wickedness that's inside of it, Lord God. Father, we ask that you would test us and try us and examine us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we would um, evict those nasty things out of our hearts, our minds, our will, and our emotions, Lord God, that we would get um, get rid of those things that, that, that have taken up residency in us, Lord God, that do not belong there. Lord, I cry out to you for mercy, God, for every person that would view today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we know that you look at our heart, God, but we want our heart to be clean before you so clean us, washes and purges with his up today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, I ask that you would take every part of our hearts out this stony, God, in the name of Jesus, and put the parts in our hearts that are pliable, where we have been stubborn in our hearts, where we have been uh, difficult in our hearts, God, I ask you, Lord God, to have mercy upon us, Lord. And I pray, God, that we would know how much you love each one of us as individuals. Father, I ask that you would visit each one of us, Lord God. Minister to each one of us, Lord God. Let us know, God, as individuals, what it is that you love about us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus and how you see us so that we can fall deeper in love with you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I bless you. I praise you and I give you thanks, Father God. In Jesus' name, I ask you all these things things. Father, I just ask you one more time, Lord God, to help us to fall deeper in love with you. Show us, Father, to turn away those from those things, God, that keep us from falling deeper in love with you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I commit every one of these people, that God, that will view the video into your hands, and may we know your love to a deeper level. In Jesus' name, I ask, amen. All right, you all, I pray that you all would have a deeper understanding, a greater understanding of how much the Lord loves you. And I pray the same thing for myself. All right. So God bless you. Don't forget to have a great week and decree and declare of yourself. I am God's obedient daughter. Somebody put it in the comments. I am God's obedient daughter or I am God's obedient son. Whoever watches this video and just speak over yourself. Remember, um, to, to meditate on the word of God. The other day, I know I'm going a little bit over, but the other day, um, the word, the Lord, just before I went to sleep, put a, 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 a scripture in my spirit and um, I'm going to do my best to meditate on that scripture and live that scripture out because the Lord just doesn't want us to meditate on the scripture. He wants us to live them out. So I want you to put on there. I am God's obedient daughter and I'm going to have a great week and whatever other scriptures that you have to meditate on so that you can uh, see the de desired results of God come forth in your life. All right. So God bless you. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Choose life.